Good evening, ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties. This is Alex, coming at you from the underworld, and welcome back to another episode of... At last, it's time for me to announce the top three books that scared the ever-loving living hell out of me in 2022. Now, I understand this video is about a month late, but as I mentioned in the last episode, I had gotten sick, so that kind of made me delayed in a few areas of life. And after I started to feel better, I needed to knock out the reviews for the books that I read last Christmas before I could move on to this episode. Also, I would just like to note that last year I did not read and review as many books as what I had hoped, and that was mostly because I had felt under the weather for a good part of last year, and I had quite a few other obligations to do. So, since 2022 has taught me life can be a relentless game of dodgeball, this year I'm not setting any goals, I'm not making any obligations, no deadlines, nothing of the sort. I'm just going to do what I can, when I can, and hope that fate is on my side. Even though I wasn't able to read as many books as what I had liked, I was still able to find three books that made me feel like I needed to sleep with the light zone. Which, I'm not gonna lie, last fall, there was a hot minute where I really thought this video was going to be titled The Top 2 Scariest Books. But lo and behold, as I was doing my Halloween lineup, I actually came across the third book, so I was really tickled pink over that. But without me rambling on anymore, as always, this list is in no particular order whatsoever. I'm not saying any one of these books were scarier than the other because I felt like they were all equally scary. So I am really thrilled to announce the top three books that scared the ever-loving living hell out of me in 2022. First up is Those Across the River by Christopher Buhlman, which this was recommended by the viewer Sloane Chessman. So Sloane, if you're watching, thank you for recommending this because this totally did the job. Now, this story takes place in the 1930s where it introduces a guy named Frank and his lover Eudora who have recently relocated to a small southern town after he inherited his aunt's house. Early on, the couple come to realize that the townspeople have a monthly tradition where they send pigs across the river on a raft where those pigs are never heard from again. But since the Great Depression starts bearing down even more, the townspeople collectively agree to quit sending the pigs because they need the meat. Shortly thereafter, this quaint community is terrorized by a series of gruesome crimes until the townspeople decide to send more pigs. While this work falls into the subgenres of Southern Goth as well as folk horror, it also does pack in a lot of commentary in regards to PTSD and racism. Which, if these are subjects that make you feel uncomfortable, then this is probably not the book for you. Now, even though this book was hard to read because it unapologetically showed racism without whitewashing it at all, this is also one of the scariest books I've read in a long time. And it's not just because of what happens, it's because of how it happens, and because of how the author constantly blindsided me while slowly turning up the creep factor until it resulted in a full-blown nightmare. And because of how all of those elements blended together, it left me feeling completely vulnerable, especially at nighttime. Which, I'm not gonna lie, I read this book about a year ago, and there are still moments to it that haunt me to this day. Next up is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, which this is the book that has inspired the new movie Knock at the Cabin. And before I give you a rundown of what you can expect, this awesome book had been gifted to me by the really kick-ass booktuber known as Spooky Noodles. And I'm really glad that he brought this book to my attention because it has haunted me long after I finished my read. 
Now, the concept of this is fairly simple, as it focuses on a same-sex couple named Eric and Andrew, as well as their adopted daughter, Wynn. And as they've decided to have some quality time together in this secluded cabin in the woods, their peaceful time is interrupted when four strangers break in and explain, unless one of the three of them kill the other, then the world is going to end. So, I know this book pissed off a lot of people as it never provided a definite answer in regards to what was going on, and because of that, these people felt like the book never had an ending. But in my opinion, this open ending is what frightened me and made me feel so unsafe long after reading. Also, because of the openness that the author provides the reader, this allows the reader to draw their own conclusion. And I really think this is a brilliant outcome because sometimes not knowing is more terrifying than knowing. And I tend to think had an answer been provided, I probably would have been disappointed. Anywho, if you're the kind of person who has to have closure at the end of a book or movie, then there's a pretty good chance that the cabin at the end of the world isn't for you. Otherwise, there were scenes and themes in this book that are still bothering me to this day, and there's one particular moment that I will never be able to scrub free from my mind. And last is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, which, once again, we're faced with a pretty simple premise, as four horror authors have gathered to be interviewed by an online streaming service known as Rightwire. Yet, the catch is, their lengthy interview is to take place on Halloween, and they are expected to overnight in an abandoned haunted mansion that has not been lived in for years. And while they're staying there, they do have some pretty frightening experiences. Yet, we soon come to realize those experiences are nothing compared to the horror that comes after they leave. Out of all of the books listed in this video, Kill Creek is the one that screwed me up the most. And there are still nights where darkness creeps me out because of the crap that went down in this book. Also, out of all of the Haunted House movies I've seen and Haunted House books I've read, I've never encountered a scenario like what I've read in Kill Creek. And because of what happens, it makes me wonder if some houses are haunted for that reason, which is absolutely terrifying. And overall, Kill Creek is the type of book that feels like it's a love letter to Shirley Jackson. But aside from that, it does feel like it's also a love letter to the horror genre in general. Well, those are the top three books that scared the ever-loving living hell out of me in 2022. And even though I haven't read anything that's been scary so far for this year, the books I have read have been fun. But now that we're at the end of this episode, I would like to thank these amazing people for contributing to my Patreon account. As you can tell, some of the names listed here are creators, so be sure to check out their work. And if you would like to contribute to my Patreon account as well, I have a link available in the description section of this episode. And if you're able to contribute, that's awesome. If not, no sweat. I just hope you return to this channel so we can have a good time together. Also, if you would like to hit me up on social media, links to my Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are all available in the description section of this episode. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe because I have more book reviews coming in the near future. So until we see each other again, I hope you have a great week and sweet nightmares.